Right, good morning everyone. Um, thank you James. Um, as James mentioned, so a year ago, um, I was sat where you were when the long, long summit of, um, with, I think, Dan Taylor. So, it was basically, I understand these, uh, this event. Good morning. Yeah. Um, this is a good show. It's my first time actually stood here doing this, so um, thank you very much for the opportunity. The, so I was with you guys on the summit. Um, this for me personally was uh, one of the best weekends of PE I ever had. Simple reason was I, we are all educators, so I understand that we want to take as much as we can and things that we can actually use and we can actually adopt straight away in the classroom. So this was an actual PD weekend that I really enjoyed. Um, so thank you very much for the opportunity. So I'll just get the, the clicker. So then a couple of weeks ago, James contacted me and said, would I be interested in actually um, getting involved with um, apps events? And at first, I was like, yeah, great. Definitely something that I actually wanted to do. Something I was keen to get involved with, learn from you guys. Then he said, would you mind doing a keynote? And again, I was like, fine, I've never done a keynote before. And then I thought it was a good experience for me to actually um, get involved in actually doing it. Um, then, I was like this. Okay, so I never actually got up on stage, I never actually presented to anyone other than in my own school. Okay? So then I was thinking, what have I got that I would be comfortable sharing with you? But also, what have I got that I, if I was sat where you were, what would you actually take from my actual um, team? Okay? So I thought, I've got some stories, some things I can, I can actually share. So I thought, yeah, good. Then James contacted me and says, right, you're first up on Saturday morning. I was like, okay, so back to this. Um, then I thought, yeah, that might be good, get, get the weekend going, and then I was this. So it's basically back and forward, back and forward. Um, I mentioned at the beginning, what I got from this weekend was loads of things that I could literally go into the classroom Monday morning and things that I could use. Okay? So even in this keynote, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to share some things that you can actually um, take away today. Just like you know, Bitmoji, some people love it, some people hate it. I'm on the love side of it, and students seem to love it as well. Google extension, put it in, and it's just quickly drag and drop and put things straight into your um, document. So then I got thinking, what can I actually share with you? Okay? What I have is my experiences, the same with you guys. You, you've been through things, you've seen things that other people haven't. Okay? So I thought it'd be actually interesting to see what I've done over the last year and exactly um, explain mistakes maybe and see what we can actually learn from that. So to start off with, first thing on a Monday morning, I'm just going to share this video with you. Code and what I'm going to do is 
Just give three words that describe how you feel. Now. On the dot, how do you feel? Um, can we have breakfast? Sorry, yeah, I can see asking the code is. So there's the code, three words. Okay, this is anonymous, so don't feel like we're going to come and find you afterwards. So what you can do with Menti is, we can actually get a live, up-to-date um, word to it. Okay? So with these students, this is something that we've been using. Um, actually understood in your way there to actually get um, instant feedback. So as you can see, it's live, instant. I will just leave it. So you can see what's going on there. So this is one tool that we constantly use, and we use it with parents as well, which I'll explain a little bit later. But So Menti is something that you can just quickly, you can have a go at this week, um, have a look on it. Go to Mentimeter, and there's different things you can actually um, try out there, and graphs, etc., charts, and things like that. So, my story, who am I? So, a year ago, I moved to, just over a year ago, I moved to Hong Kong, okay? Um, I was originally from Spain, okay, I'm not going to go through that, but I'm basically just like you guys, okay? For you to come here at 9 o'clock on a Saturday morning shows that we're all on the same page. Okay? We want to improve, we want to learn, um, so that, that's half the battle, okay? So, my background, like I said, 14 months ago, me and my wife, we moved to, to Hong Kong. 18 months ago, we signed a contract, so we said, right, we're going to go to Hong Kong. It was a school that wasn't even built, okay? The school didn't even exist. It was something that um, excited us, but at the same time, going back to the Bitmojis, we've done panic, etc. So we didn't really know what we were doing, but we thought, right, we're going to give it a go. Okay? So I went there as head of educational technology, and I went there really excited. I had all these ideas what I wanted to plan it. That was basically the vision that we had. Okay? We landed in Hong Kong August the 1st. We had a month before the school. The school wasn't even finished. We visited the school, and the school was a building site. So our first day at school, Helmets on, crash hats, and we're thinking, six my wife, what have we done? What have we got ourselves involved with? Okay? So there were these challenges that we came up with. And we got that we didn't know any of the teachers, we didn't know any of the staff, there were no policies, there was nothing set up in place. So it was basically we were on the on the back foot from the beginning. So as a team we had to come together and think, right, how are we gonna actually make something special with this? Mistakes, okay? Um, I went there with all these ideas. I wanted to get everyone Apple teacher. I wanted to get everyone Google educator. I wanted to get all these things, okay? But at the same time, other teachers, this was the last thing they wanted to do. They hadn't set up their classroom. They hadn't um, had their own curriculum together. They hadn't even met in their team. So I had all these ideas, okay? So all my enthusiasm, I was thinking my enthusiasm was going away, but then when you actually step back and think, these people maybe prioritize things differently, okay? Then, a month or so later, I actually thought, I thought people knew how to use tech at a certain level. So again, both sides of the scale. So I was, I was actually doing PD for people who, they actually knew the content. So what I didn't do, basically, is I didn't go and I didn't actually go and learn what the, um, what the staff actually knew already and what they actually wanted. Okay? Then, I was going up to people, I wanted to do a PD on a Tuesday afternoon. People, people said, but we can't do it on Tuesday afternoon. Like I said, we've got to do our curriculum, we've got to plan our classrooms. So then, it was almost like I was on a back foot. I was, it was being too nice. I said, right, fine, Tuesday, we won't do it on Tuesday. We'll do it on a, another day. And before you know it, we've done a month, two months, three months. And these, this, these things that I got off the plane in Hong Kong that I wanted to do, I hadn't set in place, I hadn't actually done. So then I became reactive. So I was actually reacting to people came up to me and said, look, I don't know how to use Google Drive, I don't know how to use um, certain tech tools. So I was reacting to that, okay? So I think what the message is, is get to know what your actual staff know already, see what they can actually share with each other, and get them involved in the actual conversation, okay? The things I'm discussing are more um, head of education technology tech base, but I do think this is applicable to other departments, see what other people do, take your time to actually find out and what they want to know, what they already know, and maybe what they can actually share. So, 
finish all of a keynote, don't put too much text, I know. But um, we started with um, the school culture, so we took a step back. Okay? We, we started two or three months, like I said, things weren't getting done. The things that we had in place weren't getting done. And it was because we hadn't got the basics right. That was me personally, and other, other departments as well. We've gone in too, too excited, too keen to actually get things done, but we actually forgot about the basics. Okay? Um, mindsets, okay? I'm speaking to you about this, but I mean, f for you coming here at 9 a.m. tells me that you, you, you've got that mindset. We're lifelong learners, you want to learn, etc., etc. Okay? So we needed to actually change the mindset of some of the staff. Um, and think like, especially when it comes to tech, we need to learn more about the technology that we're using. It's, it's, the, it's the world we live in. So we needed to actually have those actual mindsets. Okay? So I changed things around. Some people don't want to come to a meeting. Some people don't want to read long emails. So again, we had to learn what actual people wanted. Okay, so we decided, right, we're gonna, we're gonna get everybody involved in feedback, see what they wanted to learn, and then see the best way that they actually wanted to learn. So some of the things that we actually did, okay, is we stepped back and we, we, we stressed the actual importance of the actual community. So you have the students, obvious one, school, and then the actual home, okay? And arguably, all three of them need to work together for this actually to, to actually work. So as a school, we, we, we stepped back for a good six weeks, um, two months, and we said, right, let's get these actual relationships. Let's start these relationships first, and then we can actually see how it grows, okay? So in the middle, everything's there. For me, it was actually the actual technology side of things. So how can I actually go to each one of those um, communities and actually see how we can bring things together? What we were doing. So I started off um, at the skilling teachers. Okay. So I got to know what the teachers wanted. I learned that they would learn in different styles. Okay? It's exactly the same as if we were dealing with students, or we're exactly the same. Okay. So some people rather to do it, have a go at it, and trial and error. Some people rather just an email. Some people rather videos, leaflets, etc. So we went through things like that. We did we did little events like this. So we actually got people in. Um, we have an, an hour after school, so we said, right, what do you know? So we had app smashers. We had people who had these little tips. There's so much knowledge, let alone in this room. Now there's so much knowledge, but also in our schools, where people, again, go back to the idea of presuming that people actually know things, when in fact, next door to me in my classroom, there's some great practice going on. So we try to stress that idea of actually sharing things like that. Uh, we, sh we use Twitter a lot. So we have teachers on Twitter. You can actually see two doors down the road. There's people sharing stuff and we didn't even know they were actually doing it. So again, we started building that culture of actually sharing within before then they could actually go out and see what we could actually learn. So basically I set up, people get, I noticed I was, I was, I was sending out emails and I would be mentioning, oh, did you get my email last week? They got it, but maybe they didn't read it. So I, I decided to just do different areas and send different things out um, and let the actual teacher decide what's the best things that they actually do for. So we set up tech, tech tips, okay? This will go out every week and it's up to them. Just little things, similar to this weekend, little things that you can actually take away and you can take straight away into your classroom, okay? And they could choose what they're doing, their curriculum, their projects, anything on there that they could actually use and we would start to do that. Feedback was good, it's what people were interested in. Um, and then within the departments they would maybe discuss it and they themselves would actually take it further. Video, some people would rather just sit and watch a video, an explanation of things are, things are going on. Again, we'll send, we'll send them both out, we'll let the actual, um, the educator, the teacher actually decide what's actually working well for them. And I don't want to sound patronizing at all, but we had to go back to the actual basics, okay? We as teachers talk about the actual learning styles. We had to actually take that on board, okay? Um, tell our students that first week of term, build relationships with each other. We had to go and do that as well. So there's all these things that we tell our students, but then maybe once the doors are shut, the students are gone away. We don't actually follow it ourselves. So this was happening with us. So we had to go back to the basics, remind each other, each other what we were actually um, here for, what we actually wanted to do. I got a smile at it. I know, again, it's not being patronized. You'd be surprised. Um, how many teachers don't say hello to each other. Well, that's the basis of just building that relationship. Okay? I know we're all busy, but we're saying to students, smile, good morning, things like that. But we need to do that at all um, as well. So 
that's, that's, everyone's busy, people just walking past, but just build that relationship, positive attitude, open-minded, things work for some people that don't work for others. Okay, so again, I did that first few months where I just thought this is going to work, let's do this, and then I realized it didn't work at all. So I had to go back and start again, but all, I was starting on a negative foot because these people weren't actually confident of what these ideas that I had. So we had to go back to the base, open-minded, have discussions, actually build those relationships with people. So, like I said, James asked me to come up here. I'm not one, I'm probably tell, I'm not big on a confident actually speaking in front of people, but I do think it's important that we, we do, do take these opportunities to share our stories. So all of us here, come from different backgrounds, different schools, we do different things, we teach different things, I do believe we should share it, okay? Whether it's over coffee, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on blogs, forums, there's so much knowledge out there, and it's, it's, it's free knowledge, okay? I, I, I'm big on Twitter. There's so much things that I got off Twitter. I was on Twitter for a couple of years, and I was take, take, take. Okay? I built up the confidence and the, the practice at school, that I was, there's things now that I can actually share. But it's the same here. I think we need to tell our stories, share our experiences, because you might have an issue, have a problem, and you think you're the only one, and the person next to you is the same. These are things we tell our students. Okay? You've got a question, put your hand up and ask. You might, you might think it's a stupid question, there's 20 kids there who've got the same question. So we're the same. I think we need to change those mindsets, change the ideas of, right, let's work together, what are they doing here? There is a little bit of a competition thing between international schools, at this level, but when it comes down to us, we're happy to share everything, and you guys are here, we'll be sharing things. So, stress that, build those relationships with ourselves, and actually see what we can actually um, do. To end then, it's gonna take time. It's, I mean, we're in our first year, and we've literally had to go back to start again. After Christmas, we have to start again, do different things again. So I went into this school, off the plane, really excited, made a big move with my wife. I wanted to change it, and set up everything for me. Beginning. But the idea is, it's going to take time, it's going to take everybody, everybody's got to be on board, which is the difficult part, but that will start with those relationships. So build those relationships, get to know people, and then take it from there, okay? And it's going to take ages, I mean, we're in our second year now, and we've actually changed things that we did last year, because it didn't work last year. So accept that sometimes it doesn't work, okay? And these are all things that we tell our students, so I think if we could actually adopt those as well, adopt those skills, and um, it will just build for a better opportunity for our students, which is what we actually want. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you enjoy the weekend. Come and see me if you're around, we'll have a chat for a coffee or something. Um, I will have to share, I've got a few sessions coming on, so I'll see you in my sessions. Um, and I know I'll be joining a few, a few of you guys. Well. So thank you very much. Um, Thank you, Tim, for sharing your story. And so I always speak to school administrators, and we always talk about innovation and change in schools. And every administrator will say, oh, you want innovation, you want change? Start a new school. So I'm just going to interrupt Tim. What is it like? Can you actually can you implement innovation change more easily in a brand new school or an existing school? What are your thoughts on that? It seems like you're in that position. Um, is it easier in a brand new school for innovation? Yeah. We, we were really lucky, being a brand new school, so I was with EdTech, so it was like, everything we bought was state of the art. It, was, it wasn't it was a, a, a tech culture, so we didn't purchase mats five years ago that we have to use for eight years. So, it, so everything that we actually purchased was brand new, so that was, that was good. Um, the difficult thing was, is we didn't have that plan in time, so a lot of stuff was purchased we spent thousands on stuff that wasn't actually used. Um, so then, that's the downside of it. So we had stuff that we didn't actually want, they, that, that the administrators thought that we could actually buy into. The tough, the tough side then is all of this tech. Teachers need to learn to do it, to use it. When? When have we got time to actually do that? So that was a tough thing. So what we tried to do was pinpoint certain people within different levels of the school, different grades, different departments, just get one person right. This one person knows how to use dash dots. This one person knows how to use Osmos. This one person's your Google guy. This one person's your Apple teacher. So we did this, and so they were then their go-to people. Um, we set up areas in the school. Um, Hong Kong, those who've been, is, is, there's not much space, but we, we, we wanted um, staff rooms, faculty rooms, that um, people could go and they know they could find someone in there. So it's then it was those areas to build relationships and things like that. 
where you have a coffee to be posted. So it, it's, it's, I will say it's easier. I'm not going to deny it because we, we had all that new tech, but it's, it's possible for both. And last thing as well, I thought that the uh, newsletter that you published were absolutely fantastic. Do you foresee yourself continuing that on your own, or do you have other people contributing to it? So that seems like a big job. It, it's um, big to get it going, but then what we've done then is we, I, I've reached out to any staff who want to share their thing. So, and we, we, we notify that like, what's the name, Mrs. Evans is sharing it, or Mr. Williams is sharing it. So these are things then that. It, it's, a, it's an open document so people can actually contribute. Same with the videos there. And like we did the app standing, people can come up and they can say, look, this is what I'm doing. Five minutes, we've done two minute clocks. We say, you two minutes, what, what did you do this week that was great? Coffee, cookies, things like that to, to draw people in. And yes, yeah, so we try to get as many people involved as we can. Thank you, Tim. Again, please, warm round of applause for Tim Evans. I know that was a huge amount of information just there. So Tim is around all weekend, so please do catch up with him over lunch or even this afternoon as well. And again, reminder, we do have a networking party this afternoon at Oak Valley Wines, which is on Suckenbit, which is a little bit far from here, let's say. But we do have a school van, a school bus, leaving from here at about 4, 4.30. We'll confirm a time later. Uh, they'll be taking people direct to Oak Valley Wines for a, for a few drinks on the bus. So I hope to see everybody there. For now, we've got some very excited presenters getting ready for their sessions. Here's Lee, I was introducing him earlier. Lee Webster, give it up for Bank Holiday. Lee Webster. <laughs> How many of you got Google Plus now, Lee? 100 and... Uh, 240 plus 10,000. 240 plus 10,000 pounds. 240,000. <laughs> it's nearly a quarter of a million, Lee. So, connect with these uh, amazing presenters, guys. Have a great weekend. Please make your way over to the uh, middle school.